Here I want to look at an interesting question, which I think leads to a very surprising result. So our goal is to find what is the largest n-dimensional ball that can fit in the corner of an n-dimensional cube. So what do I really mean by fit in the corner? Well, here's what I mean, and I'm going to do this with two examples first. So here I've got an two-dimensional cube, in other words, a square. I gave it a side length of one. And then I have a two-dimensional ball, in other words, a circle with kind of the stuff filled in inside of that square. And our goal is to find the largest circle that I can fit in the corner of this setup. Or in the three-dimensional case, I've got a sphere that's within a cube. And then that cube is side length two again, making the sphere radius one. And I want to figure out what's the largest sphere I can put in the corner up here. Okay, well, let's maybe answer this question first, then we'll answer this question, and then we'll see how to proceed to the general case. Okay, so starting with this question, I'm going to go ahead and put a center here, and then I want to measure the distance from the center of this circle to the center of this circle. So I can put a straight line here. Now if I'm calling the radius of my blue circle equal to r, then I can see that that length right there is 1 plus r. Because I've got a radius of the white circle and a radius of the blue circle. So next, I want to complete that into a right triangle. And I can do that as follows. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of this square. Well, how much of this square? That's going to be one radius of that blue circle. And then likewise, I'm going to cut off one radius of the square in this direction. Again, that's one radius of this blue circle. And that gives me some motivation for how to complete this right triangle. So I can complete the right triangle as follows. That makes this length right here 1 minus r, this length right here 1 minus r. And then we can just apply Pythagorean theorem. So we know that 1 plus r squared is equal to 1 minus r squared plus 1 minus r squared, like that. Okay. So from there, we can see that r plus 1 squared, I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit, is equal to 2 times 1 minus r squared. I can go ahead and take the square root, and I see that r plus 1 is equal to the square root of 2 times 1 minus r. You might think that I need plus or minus the square root of 2 times 1 minus r, but actually I'll just take the positive square root because otherwise I'll end up with a circle which is larger than my white circle. Okay, so let's see where we can go from here. So moving some things around, I see that r and then 1 plus the square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 2 minus 1. So in other words, I have r is equal to the square root of 2 minus 1 over the square root of 2 plus 1. Now let's see how we can simplify that. Well, maybe an interesting thing to do is figure out how much less than 1 it is. And we can make that calculation pretty easily. So notice that this is equal to the square root of 2 plus 1 minus 2 all over the square root of 2 plus 1. I've just changed minus 1 to plus 1 minus 2. But now I can separate this out into two fractions, leaving me with 1 minus 2 over the square root of 2 plus 1, like that. Okay, so let's maybe bring this r down and put a little box here. So the largest circle that we can fit in this corner has radius 1 minus 2 over the square root of 2 plus 1. Now let's do the same thing over here. But here maybe we'll use a coordinate system. So here we can put the origin at this point. So this is going to be the point 0, 0, 0. And then this point way up here in the corner is point 1, 1, 1. So in other words, it's one unit along the x, y, and z axis. From that, we can see that the center of this circle 
is at the point 1 minus r, 1 minus r, and 1 minus r. Okay, so now we want to find the distance from 0, 0, 0 to 1 minus r, 1 minus r, 1 minus r, and measure that two ways, one with the distance formula, and then one using the fact that this is just length one plus length radius of this sphere. I guess I should have pointed out that r was the radius of the sphere. Okay, so let's see what we get for that. So like I said, on one hand, this is one plus the radius of the sphere, but on the other hand, it's the distance between these two points, which we can calculate with the distance formula. That'll give us the square root of one minus r squared plus one minus r squared plus one minus r squared using the distance formula. But that's pretty easily sim simplifiable to the square root of three times one minus r. Now we've got a linear equation that we can use to solve for r. So let's see what we get. We'll have r times one plus the square root of three equals the square root of three minus one. Okay, so that means that r is equal to the square root of three minus one over the square root of three plus one. Now we can play the same trick that we did over here to write this as how far it is from one. So in other words, we're gonna take this minus one and write it as plus one minus two, and then we'll have r is equal to one minus two over the square root of three plus one. So while the largest circle we could fit down here had radius one minus two over root two plus one, the largest sphere that we can fit up here has radius one minus two over the square root of three plus one. So notice that this number is larger than this number, which kind of makes sense because you think that there's a little bit more space up here because we have a higher dimensional space than what we have here. Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and clean this up and we'll look at the n-dimensional case. Okay, so I've mocked up the n-dimensional case, although because it's really hard to draw, I've only drawn it in three dimensions. But notice that I've put it in a coordinate system that has n coordinates. So here we've got the origin at the middle of everything. So that's going to be the point 0, 0, 0, 0, where we had n zeros. And then this point along the cube, or this vertex of the n hypercube, is the point 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So that means we've got an n hypercube of side length 2. And then we've got our n sphere up here. And so by an argument which is essentially symmetric to what we did before, but just in higher dimensions, we know that the center of this sphere is 1 minus r, 1 minus r, all the way up 1 minus r. So there are n copies of 1 minus r. You can think about that just by cutting off like a radius of this n sphere from each of these components of our coordinate system. Now, just like we had done before, we want to measure this distance between the center of our two hyperspheres two different ways. So first off, we know this distance is 1 plus r, where r is the radius of our hypersphere up in the corner. So I know r plus 1, or I guess 1 plus r, will be equal to the distance between these two points using the distance formula. So the distance formula will be the square root of the difference in the x coordinates squared, the difference in the y coordinate squared, the sum of the difference of the z coordinate squared, but here we've got n different coordinates. So that means we've got the square root of 1 minus r minus 0, so that's going to be 1 minus r squared plus 1 minus r minus 0, that's another copy of that, and so on and so forth. But that's happening in all of those n coordinates, so that's going to give us the square root of n times 1 minus r squared. In other words, the square root of n times 1 minus r. And that gives us just this nice linear equation that we can use to solve for r. So we can add the square root of n times r to both sides, 
and that'll leave us with the square root of n plus one times r. Then we can subtract one from both sides. That'll leave us with the square root of n minus one. Now I'm gonna do that same trick that we did before. Notice this is the same thing as the square root of n plus one minus two given the fact that one minus two is negative one. Now I can divide and we'll see that r is equal to one minus two over the square root of n plus one. So that one comes from the square root of n plus one over the square root of n plus one. And then the obvious fraction comes from the other place. So the important thing that I wanna notice here is as n gets larger and larger and larger, this fraction gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So in the limit, as n goes to infinity, this goes to one, which means we can find an n where it's possible to put a sphere up here that is arbitrary close, arbitrarily close to having a radius of one which seems crazy because our largest sphere has radius of one and it intersects all of the faces of this hypercube, whereas this other sphere only intersects half the faces and then it is also tangent to our largest sphere. So I think this really underscores that spheres are really, really weird objects in higher dimensions. And that's a good place to stop.